We've had a number of rehearsal spaces over the years. We found this one. It seemed like the best one yet. I tend to believe there's a scientific explanation behind a lot of phenomena, and there's a lot that I don't believe in. But I always thought it'd be cool to see a ghost. But it, it wasn't. The first thing that happened was we were rehearsing, and we took a break for a second, and I, I look over at Sonny, and he's turning purple. I didn't feel any different. I, I didn't feel purple. I'm like, what are you guys looking at? I thought it was a trick of the light or a shadow maybe, but uh, we got closer and I could see that that obviously was not the case. It took about 15 seconds for him to get from normal to deep purple. And we just all looked at each other and we were like freaked out really fast. I ran out to Mark's truck to look in the mirror. I almost had a heart attack. We were ready to take him to the emergency room, but as quick as it started, it just, it stopped. If I hadn't seen it, I would have never believed it, but I, I saw this with my own eyes. Uh, about two weeks after that, we were uh, writing a new song, and at the end of that song, we, we heard a woman's voice screaming, help me, from outside. Well, we thought it was outside. So we went outside, but it wasn't as loud. I couldn't hear it very well. We went back inside, and it was louder. Uh, we went all over that practice space trying to find out where it was coming from. Uh, turns out it was coming from Pete's amp. So we pretty much knew something was up. There is no other available practice spaces. Um, and up until this point, we had never seen anything. We we're in no physical danger. And even though Sonny was freaked out about what happened to him, he was okay. Well, um, a few weeks later, we're rehearsing, and I'm playing along, and suddenly I'm not in the practice space anymore. I'm looking out over a huge valley that just stretches on endlessly. Adam had just stopped playing and had this blank expression on his face, and after a few seconds of that, we all stopped playing and asked him if he was all right. I'm not even joking. He looked at us, and in a woman's voice, not his own voice, he accused us of betraying him, and told us he never wanted to move out here. I have no memory of this. I went over to him, his eyes rolled back, and, and he went down. I cracked my headstock. Well, he was fine. He just didn't remember saying any of that. He just remembered what he saw. Those were the first few things. There, there have been a ton of other things that have happened since then. Um, things that seem to sort of have this like concept to them. Um, it's hard to explain, but they became like clues. And, and, and these clues were like leading us to a place in the practice space just behind Adam's amp. We found something, and we keep it in a case. We've taken pictures of it, we've tried to film it, and when we play it back, there's nothing there. I don't think it wants to be photographed. I, I we'd love for you to know exactly what this thing is. I'd, I'd love to describe it, but that just cannot be done. We're just going to bring the briefcase to the BBB Well Love Roller show so everybody can see it, so everybody can, can know. Well, we're hoping that after that, maybe you'll get some peace. Maybe it'll leave me alone. I don't think so. Out of all of you, who's been hit the hardest emotionally? I think Pete. Why? I really don't. I'm not comfortable talking about this. <laughs>